All right. So I'm going to say a prayer and we'll get started. All right. Place my hands in my heart. Taking that deep breath and breath. So grateful and thankful for this opportunity to come together to be the two or more gathered in the name and the nature of love. Grateful for our willingness to um, expand into more and more love, our willingness to walk the talk of A Course in Miracles, our willingness to be led and guided, to be reminded of our true identity, which is perfect, whole, complete, innocent love. We are grateful for our desire to uh, discover and eliminate any and all blocks to love, allowing them to dissolve and resolve back to the nothingness from which they came. And we're grateful for the mighty companions, all those here, all who will listen later, uh, all the earthly and heavenly helpers that walk with us and talk with us and bless us each and every day. And we are grateful to have open, receptive hearts and minds to receive those blessings. And we're also grateful for our willingness to share those blessings because we are one in grace and gratitude we let it be and so it is amen hmm. all right so we are still in the um, psychotherapy uh, addendum to a course in miracles we're in chapter two the process of psychotherapy uh, section six the definition of healing. And I'm going to start us with paragraph one. Um, the process of psychotherapy then can be defined simply as forgiveness for no healing can be anything else. The unforgiving are sick, believing they are unforgiven. The hanging on to guilt, it's hugging close and sheltering, it's loving protection and alter defense. All this is but the grim refusal to forgive. God may not enter here, the sick repeat over and over while they mourn their loss and yet rejoice in it. Healing occurs as patient begins to hear the dirge he sings and questions its validity. Until he hears it, he cannot understand that it is he who sings it to himself. To hear it is the first step in recovery. To question it must then become his choice. And um, it's interesting because I love, I love this whole section. I, this whole booklet is so cool, but every, single time I read something, it brings me back to um, the things that I hold against myself, the things that I see in others that they are holding against themselves or others, and recognizing that those, if I'm seeing those things, it means that I'm recognizing those things within myself somewhere, even though I don't know what they are and may not understand them, but I know that that's the truth. And so when I read that first paragraph, it reminded me of that prayer in um, chapter five of the text where he says, I must have decided wrongly because I'm not at peace. This is it. Anytime we are not at peace, no matter if we're having physical challenges, no matter if we're having emotional or mental challenges, anytime we are not at peace, we have made the decision to not be at peace. For whatever reason, we have decided that it would be better to punish ourselves. <laughs> and so, um, you know, that is the insanity of this seeming, uh, illusion that we're living in so yeah so that's where i'm starting us off would anybody else like to share we'll share 
Okay, thanks, Kathleen. Uh, Monday, I, um, Robert Perry does a, a meditation for half an hour every Monday. And this Monday, he um, had us all visualize someone that we had a complex relationship with in the past. And then say to that person, your sins are forgiven, your sins are forgiven, your, your mistakes are forgiven, your errors are forgiven over and over until we deeply got into that feeling of forgiving, uh, letting that person know that they were forgiven. And then we had <clears throat> switched it and had the, that person say the same thing to us. As he said, you know, at our soul level, we all want to know that we are forgiven. We're forgiven. We're forgiven. And so we choose this person out of our past with this complex relationship who's telling us that we're forgiven. We're forgiven. <clears throat> and then he had us all, there was 150 of us, take that energy and send it over to the Mideast and send it to Gaza and send it to Ukraine. <clears throat> And just tell all these people in these conflicted areas that they are forgiven, they're forgiven, they're forgiven. And it was so powerful. And then this is exactly what it's talking about in here. I'm the one that needs to, to know I'm forgiven, you know, at that soul level. And um, that can be tricky sometimes. It just, we flip back to thinking that we're born with this ego thought system and that it's normal to feel like guilty and bad all the time or some of the time and that's not true that's not what we were born with we're born with complete innocence and holiness and and our god nature and the rest of that stuff was thrown on us by everything parents and society and all those beliefs <clears throat> so it was just a perfect um companion to this chapter where talking about people who are ill just feel like they're not forgiven and Boy, if I could really figure out how to heal everyone, wouldn't that be something? Wow. So anyway, it's all about healing myself. I know that. Anyway, it was good. It was good. This is good. Uh, thanks, Kathleen. Yeah, that sounds like a really powerful exercise. And uh, isn't that the truth? That It's easier, at least for me, to say you're forgiven, you're forgiven, you're forgiven, but then turning that same energy on yourself, I am forgiven, I am forgiven. Yeah, it actually helped to have it come from, like I use Paul, my relationship with Paul, yes. but come from Paul, you're forgiven, you're forgiven, you're forgiven. Yes. It was really, oh, it was really good. Yeah, oh my God, I'd be sobbing. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, oh, thank you for sharing that. Catherine. Yeah, I, I, this one was, um, I always like doing these sections that we talk about forgiveness and sickness because we just so easily fall back into this place of we've done something wrong or somebody has done something wrong. It is just refreshing. And yet I'm discovering that we just need the constant reminders that this is just all about finding forgiveness for the self. Because I can be mad and angry, and certainly I do go there at others. And, you know, I, I think I'm getting better at coming quickly back to, okay, what is lying in here that I need to let go of? Even my confusion about, you know, some of you know I'm in this place of trying to decide what am I to do next? Where am I to be? What am I to embrace? And, and just the mere fact of I'm trying so hard to figure that out. And what I know <clears throat> is that I just have to let go of that. I have no control here. None whatsoever, except to accept. If I could be in this place of acceptance that so many things reveal and it helped me to go there because I always struggle when I'm in, in prayer rooms and there's somebody quite ill and they're praying for healing. And I know right away, they're not getting that healing is of the mind. And so I just go there that let us be willing to be healed on all levels of anything that we think is wrong or bad with us or anything we think we see because we're seeing with eyes of perception. And this is, you know, a lot of prayer requests here for what's going on overseas. And I am just reminding myself and others as I'm able that we are here to pray for peace. We are here to pray that we see that there's nothing that we see 
that is real. So if we have to close our eyes and do so, then let's do so and just see that peace is like raindrops that just wash over us. Let that wash over us that we might heal ourselves. And as we heal ourselves and we allow what is, and we allow spirit to take the reins, because by golly, I just want to take them back. I just want to take, and I recognize it. I just don't always recognize it in the, you know, right away that so forgiveness heals our unforgiveness. <laughs> so I just... I'm trying to be there. I'm glad we're talking about this right now. But, you know, no stories. It's just let's work on this together. Thanks for letting me share. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Catherine. So helpful. Mary Lee and then Carla. I know I started a little bit late and I apologize for that. I couldn't help it. <laughs> um, it reminded me when we're talking about triggers of uh, what I think I'm getting just a little bit better at, at picking those up. Um, for instance, uh, I too was reading the newspaper about the news and uh, feeling triggers of um, maybe anxiety or anger uh, and then I, I thought, oh, well, I'll read the advice column. That, that'll, <laughs> that'll put me in a, a different, you know, feeling. Well, as I read that, I could feel myself getting a bit of angst and ir irritation, a, a trigger of not, and it was about forgiveness. And uh, as is so often with those uh, advice columns, um, it was just a situation that many, many people have gone through where a married couple, you were friends with both of them, the man and the husband, and you were friends with them for many years. And all of a sudden the man has a new woman and the left, wife with three children was, you know, just devastated. And this was in the perspective of a girlfriend saying, why can't she get over it? My land, it's been five years. It's five years. What is five years when you've had your, your husband is, and what the perspective of the girlfriend that was writing and saying, what's taking her so long? I thought, my land, but that is a very, that's a biggie. That, that is such a big personal thing to be forgiven and to expect her to just join in now with the uh, other couples that are all, oh, everything's fine. You can come if you want. Well, what's the matter with you? I, th I just, that triggered something in me that um, <laughs> that individual who can't, can't uh, find it, I can relate to that, how, um, Forgiveness is not some easy thing that, uh, and when it's on a real personable level like that, your personal friends and your mate of many years and going off and joining the same group that you had been in. Um, I, I too was just touched at the emphasis of forgiveness here that healing uh it, it uh it is very healing to to feel that forgiveness but how difficult it can be on those really close personalized issues so i just wanted to add that that as i was reading through the lessons last night and uh that 
I thought, well, I can see what triggered me now in that uh, article that I could relate how how difficult that that is. That takes a lot of healing and prayer. And you're, I felt like the person, incidentally, that answered that particular advice column, the ones giving the advice, it comes from a man and a woman. They had some column that it comes out on Sundays. Anyway, I didn't feel that they hit that on the head. Well, you know, join another group or, you know, oh, it'll get better. It was very flimsy. It didn't talk a lot of, it didn't hit the nitty gritty of work on forgiveness. So um, I, I uh, appreciate what we're uh, striving to practice in this group. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Mary Lee. It, it is a, it can feel like a challenge when you're in the midst of the pain. So yeah, the person that's saying to her, why can't she get over it? She's not in that pain with her. Mm -hmm. She's not sitting there with her, having compassion, imagining what it's like to walk a mile in her shoes with three kids and no other adult supporting her in the household anymore. So um, it can feel like a big thing. And I know from experience that it's also a society thing we do the same thing with grief with people who have lost their spouses. A lot of times if they have been in groups of friends that are couples, they are, they no longer feel comfortable or included with those couple events. And um, yeah, it really, it is uh for me about having compassion and, and allowing people to be exactly where they are, whether they're still in a place of unforgiveness or not, and understand that it's not my job to change that person's mind. Yes, I may think it would be helpful for her if she could forgive her ex-husband and his new girlfriend, possibly wife, it would help. But I can't make her make that leap. So my job is just to practice forgiveness in my own life and be a demonstration of what forgiveness has done for me. And, you know, maybe she'll think about it in a different way. In the meantime, just love her exactly where she is. Thank you for that perspective. That was, that was cool. Carla and then Diane. First, I want to express uh, my gratitude to, I've always, I don't think I've ever written this psychotherapy handbook because my mind used to judge it, go, judge it or something. And it's been so, I sell stuff in the street, but it's been so helpful. I mean, I have probably one, two, three, four, five, like 10 lines in this, but I'll just stick to one. And that's the first line of the seventh paragraph. No one is healed alone. So I've discovered that I can desire healing for other people. It's, what is that truly masking? It's masking my own desire.
to, it's not about healing myself, it's about letting go of judgments. If when I think about the people and when I think about myself. And so I wasn't planning on doing it, but it, I'm gonna read a poem. And it's really about where my own forgiveness, I will say started, but I noticed it more fully, but it has already started. I forgive me. I forgive me for believing I made mistakes. I forgive me for holding on to blame. I forgive me. I forgive me for thinking anything should be different than what is. I forgive me for choosing anything other than love. I forgive me fully and completely. And I let go. I let go of holding on to anything from the past. I let go of beliefs I hold about myself or anyone else. I let go. I let go of attaching happiness to appearance. I let go fully and completely. And I surrender. I surrender holding on to anything. I surrender holding on to judgments, beliefs, and opinions. I surrender it all. I surrender it fully and completely. And I start anew. I start anew each moment. I start anew each choice. I choose. I choose love. I choose forgiveness. And I create. I create from my divine self. And a whole new experience unfolds. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. Beautiful. Diane. Um, I just wanted to share. I am new to all of this. August is when I joined with Jennifer and heard about A Course in Miracles, but have never studied it. And so for me, this is just really showing me how much forgiveness has always been something I've really had a difficult time with. Mm -hmm. And ever since I was a little kid, I'm seeing now the meaning I made of it. And like, I'm never truly forgiven. And I'm spending all this time trying to heal myself. <laughs> Yet I believe that I'm never truly forgiven. So this, this whole, what we've been studying since I've joined you, Linda, has been so powerful for me of opening up to a whole new perspective and seeing the power of forgiveness, even though people have been talking to me about it, like what was ingrained in me for so long. <laughs> I'm like, I can't see it another, like I, as much as I tried to see it another way, what my body has been holding onto hasn't been able to <laughs> release that. And I'm noticing now the more that I'm understanding it in this whole new way, I'm able to start allowing it in and then peeling back the layers and creating a new meaning behind the belief of 
forgiveness. Um, so I just feel like it's very, very powerful. And for me, it was just starting there of like, what am I even making meaning of, of forgiveness? Because I had a whole bunch of stuff attached to it and letting go of, and still letting go of the judgments and opinions and beliefs that we have around it. So I just wanted to share that because I just feel um, it's been really powerful for me, even in just the few months that I've been in this work and just the way that Jennifer, um, that's what attracted me to Jennifer. Someone shared of her forgiveness workshop and how she presented forgiveness, which was a completely different way than I was ever taught or shown or <laughs> heard before. So just wanted to share that. Yeah. Thank you, Diane. It is, it's a radical shift in, in looking at the way that um, we view forgiveness. I mean, I, it's funny, I was uh, talking with Kathleen before everybody else joined today. And to me, like for now, now I, that I have, a, 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 I feel like it's a better understanding of what forgiveness is. It really is about letting go of the idea that it could be any different than it was. And um, so I was talking to Kathleen about um, yesterday, uh, we decided that we were going to just have leftovers for dinner. And so I was digging through the fridge looking for something to eat because there were a bunch of different bowls of leftovers. And I found something that I remembered was really, really yummy when I made it, but I couldn't remember how long it was in the refrigerator. And, and I thought, well, it can't be that long. So I ate it and I regretted it. So I was sick. I was sick during the night um, because it was probably a little past its prime. And so I can say that, you know, that was a really stupid choice for me. But honestly, I spent four days last week working uh on uh, painting and redecorating our bedroom for four to five hours each day. And I, and then I hosted a, um, a day retreat, a, a drum circle day retreat with our um, drum facilitator teacher on Saturday from like I was there at quarter after nine and I didn't leave until quarter to four. And, and then we went to dinner and we had my son and his wife over afterwards on Sunday. And so I needed a rest. And my intention yesterday when I didn't have anything scheduled was instead of resting, I was going to strip the <laughs> the furniture in the bedroom and put the new wax on that I got because I'm really excited to get that done uh, but this stopped all of that this stopped me going to my 7 a.m support group meeting that I facilitate it stopped me going to yoga this morning it might prevent me from going to my somatic dance class this evening it's making me rest so I'm forgiving myself for making that choice because it made me stop. It made me take rest. Um, so I'm for, I'm already forgiven because I know that the, I made the choice so that I, because my personality is, you know, bull in a China shop. Let's just keep going. Let's just plow through it just forgiving because it is what it is and I can't change anything that is in the past and the choices I made are the choices I made and they are for my highest good because I chose them. Yeah, it's exciting and it's definitely a different way of thinking about things. Kathy. And welcome. It's been a little while since you've been here. It's good to yeah, see you. It's, it's good. I um, actually have COVID and I'm in and some of my usual activities are disturbed. Uh, but I'm on the other side of the symptoms, which anybody that's had it knows what a grateful moment that is. Anyway, um, but I, I was just thinking for me how the word should uh, comes into everything. Uh, and I think that's been expressed by everybody. Um, 
what I should be, what I should do, what you should be, what you should do. Um, and the word that, you know, Groucho Marx used to have this word that popped down on his old fashioned show. And that was the word for the night. Well, the big word for me is the word compassion because um, somewhere in my decision-making thought about reality, I decided um, black and white rules, uh, measure up, uh, that's your only way to have anything good. And it, and it also became so, quite a bit about external, you know, or who's making up these important rules and everything. This all became external instead of internally based. Anyway, so the word compassion really got lost a lot. And uh, I'm in a big uh, tendency for 12-step recovery and, and I have a lot of things around that. And um, and some of the recur they actually even work use a term they say there's purity of knowledge well what what they mean by that is black and white oh let's don't let anybody change the black and white rules because we'll all be safer if we if we just get down and hunker down to uh everything we can think of uh that we've quote agreed and because we've agreed they must be special blah 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 but but the worst part about all this is that it's pretty deep in me uh, that I bought it all and and I still do and that <clears throat> and I, I remember I used to work for the IRS and it was a, a tough place to work and um, I was so kind on the phone right after somebody chewed me out it's really interesting I didn't know what compassion was until I needed it and then as soon as I realized how bad I needed it, boy, that next caller got a lot of compassion from me, you know, and um, it's just um, so recently in the last 24 hours, um, I mean, of course, when we need lessons, lessons are sent to us and, and, and something has come through, uh, well, first of all, uh, a new contact person, a uh, we wanted to be action partners and we don't, haven't had any history with each other. And it turns out this is a woman who really knows how to teach compassion. And so she's teaching compassion to me. And, and, and she doesn't teach it by saying, you do this, you do that. You didn't do this. You didn't do that because that wouldn't be compassion. And she knows compassion. And so she has a wonderful way of saying, well, the only thing I can teach you is to talk to you about my experience. And, um, and and then is telling me, you know, a little bit more of her history, involvement, and 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 then as she does each part, she goes, well, did, did that show you? Was there anything you wanted to ask about that and stuff like this? And even that teaches compassion. In other words, I don't need to point at you. I don't need to talk about you. I just need to talk about me, you know. And and since we're all one, if I talk real honestly about myself, I'm probably going to be doing a lot of help for you, you know. And you probably are going to be. It'll all be good. So, um, <clears throat> but today I, I call in to you guys out of a kind of desperate feeling that I'm having a very um, gray mode, let's just say that. And I don't like gray modes. Uh, this is my sixth day of the COVID thing. And I'm usually a person that works to be up. You're doing this. We're doing that. We got a reason to be happy. We go here. We go there. And, and well, the odd thing is there's not a reason in the world for me to be unhappy, except uh, I'm feeling uh, affinity for uh, being grumpy and it's not good enough. And um, so thanks for letting me talk and hope everybody has a good day. Thank you, Kathy. I mean... Um, I'm just, I'm sending you all kind of love because I mean, I just was sick one day and I'm feeling grouchy. So <laughs> six days, I'd be like, let me the F out of here. So I, I have compassion for you in that. And I also love that you mentioned how, you know, we've been taught things are black and white, things are black and white. And that's one of the things that I love, love, love about A Course in Miracles is he says that this is not the only path. 
it's the fastest path. And at one point he tells us, let go of the course because everything is here already. It's already within us. So um, yeah, uh, deprogramming ourselves to that space of righteousness. There's a right way and a wrong way to do things. You know, it takes a little bit of time and having compassion for ourselves when we're on that journey to getting there um, is so helpful. And yeah, I'm glad you found this new person that you're connected with because that, I mean, that's how I love to teach. It, it's, I can't tell anybody to do anything, but I can tell them what my experience is with things and, you know, they can take what they want from it and throw the rest away, whatever I'm, you know, I'm, I am not the end all be all, obviously. I don't know a single teacher that is <laughs> of uh, wealth and knowledge and, you know, and peace and happiness, but I can tell you what my experience was with something and maybe you'll find something good in that and maybe you won't and it's okay either way. Yeah, glad, glad you're on that journey with compassion. Carolyn. Yes, glad to be here. Um, I, ha I, I had COVID too, I just got over COVID. And I had uh, a talk with one of the counselors in uh, in this program, Power of Love Ministry. And she mentioned, I had said how I was feeling. And she mentioned that there was a part of her healing where she just felt blah. She felt very blah, like, just like, like kind of numb and blah. And uh, I said, yeah, that's kind of how I feel. You know, and so I just wanted to mention that to you, Kathy, and maybe it's a part of the part of the healing part. Part, but one thing I, I will say uh, that I am grateful for is that many years when many years ago when I was in the twelve step program, I learned that living in the shades of gray was so much more helpful than living in the black and white. You know, that not everything is black or white. And, you know, we make judgments, especially from a black and white viewpoint. You know, uh, the other day I had a great, oh my goodness, I was so silly and so obnoxious. But the other day, I. I went to a group in Connecticut. I live in Connecticut on the shoreline. That's a beautiful area to A Course in Miracles. And the man who has this property has a yurt. And we were all in the yurt. Yeah, we were all in the yurt. And he has goats on the property. You know, and some of the goats come in, but, you know, we all want to pet the goat. And he, and he, and he says, you know, don't let them stay too long because they're not potty trained. <laughs> and <clears throat> don't give them paper because they'll wind up eating it. But uh, anyway, yeah, I, it was so lovely. And, uh, and I find it to be so lovely. And uh, so I got out. What do you know? I got out. It's an hour and 15 minute trip, but it's worth it. And um, yeah, I am so relieved from the fact that I don't live in the black and white. And I was so happy and so happy. And there came a judgment. I started judging someone, you know, and I'm still having a problem letting it go. Like, I still feel like I'm right, you know, and I would like to have compassion about it. You know, so boy, these things come up all of a sudden and uh, and to be reminded to forgive yourself. Thank you. And by the way, he gave out a free, all of us, the, uh, he was talking about the song of prayer and he gave out free 
handouts to all of us. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Carolyn. Yeah, the, that black and white world, I feel like that's how cults are started because there are people that are so afraid of everything in the world that if they see somebody that tells them that they have all the answers and that they're going to keep them safe, that, I mean, and even, you know, religions, Catholicism, all, you know, it can be anything. If we follow blindly, we're not using our heart. If we can't question something somebody says and say, well, that's coming from a human and we all have our own flavors on things, our own ideas and opinions and judgments on things. It's, it's not written in stone, you know? So black and white has never been helpful to me. Um, because that's where a lot of my judgments come from. <laughs> you know, I think I'm right because that's, the way that I have been moving through this world my entire life. I think I'm right. And when I remember that, that I have places in myself that are still like that, then I can have compassion even for the people that show hatred towards others because they think they're so right that those people that they hate or are prejudiced against are, are wrong or, you know, should be different or whatever. I don't know. It's just a gray world. It sounds like it's boring, but it feels like bliss. <laughs> you know, it's that place of peace where you're not super high and you're not super low. Yeah. But Linda, yes. living in shades of gray give you the freedom to make a choice that maybe you would have never made. Exactly. You know, I could change my mind. Yes. I don't have to go in this one way, this one path. In addition to I'm more open to what other people do, whatever they do, that's their choice. Yes. And Shades of Grey is so full of freedom. Yeah. I live, I, you know, I choose to live in freedom, not to live in, well, this is the way it's done and this is the way we do it. And, you know, I could respect that with someone else. And if I'm in their presence and I'm say helping them, I'll do what, what the way they would like it but I might say can you be a little flexible <laughs> so right. so anyway yeah. yeah it's funny because I really don't like the color gray like when everybody had like all their interiors were gray and all the cars were coming out gray or there was muted tone colors I'm like oh, why is everything so gray but yeah we can make it shades of colors instead. Yes, exactly. <laughs> different tones and different saturations of color. But obviously, I like the dark saturated color. <laughs> can I say some, something? Yeah, go ahead, Mark. Uh, uh, it's like what you you were talking about, um, the, the black and white and the, the being right. Um, it's like, I don't know who said it, but uh, so like, um, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Mm -hmm. And that was a strong one for me because you can hold on to your righteousness, but it's going to be at the cost of uh, your own happiness. Yeah. Yeah. 
I prefer to be happy and at peace. Thanks for that reminder, Mark. Anybody else like to share anything? Well, this uh, 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 thing that that um, that you were talking about uh, earlier, um, no, Linda, I no, I don't remember the details, but I remember what I was going to say. <laughs> That's uh, um, um, yeah, it's like when you think you did something wrong and you blame yourself for it. Um, a part of it is is like you're making it very personal. Uh, where is it? Um, well, I for me, uh, it's 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 um, uh, how do you say? It's a supporting to to remember myself that I, you don't have to believe in it, but I believe that everything is predestined, and 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 there's like everything actually already happened and so um when i did something wrong i made, made the wrong choice i remind myself well not always but sometimes i remind myself of that like okay this choice was just a part of my life playing out like it does and that helps me to not make it so personal and to let it let, helps me to let go of the self-blame and just like, okay, this is just a neutral thing. This happened and it had some consequences. And I'll deal with that now. But I'm not going to blame myself. Because it just happened. Just like everything else just happens. Yeah. Which is not so easy, but sometimes it helps. <laughs> yeah, it does help. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I just wanted to read too uh, from Hamira. Hamira she recently saw three inspirational movies about forgiveness um, for what one may conceive as unforgivable acts, the end of all wars, the railway man and let it go. So thanks for that. I'm always looking for good movies to watch and this might be a good day to do that. <laughs> Robin, were you gonna share something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just love this conference conversation and especially the idea about gray because gray is my favorite colors wearing and I have my it and uh, anyway <laughs> so it's interesting all of our dislikes and likes and um, um, also I never thought about gray in the way we're sharing and the grayness is the unknown I mean it's gray and so it just immediately, I was like, oh, that sounds like being at, choosing the unknown, which is going to be way more exciting. <laughs> so there's that. And um, another thing about the neutrality, Mark just used the word, that was another uh, in the midst of whatever is the opportunity to say stay stable or stay neutral stay in my loving heart, stay neutral. I desire to know, and it's through the unknown. And so for me, right now, I've been doing A Course in Miracles for a long time, and yet I feel like I'm a kindergartner in a lot of areas. And what has come up for me is that, Robin, you think you are alone, and you forget about spirit which is i think about spirit and all, all the time but actually and now i want to really be living in that place and so my intention i made an intention of i am going to be asking for help even if i don't know specifically i want to pause and the pausing is really important it's uh, Kathy, maybe your illness is about telling you to slow down. <laughs> so <laughs> you probably know that. But anyhow, um, and I love the idea of slowing down because of the opportunity to move forward from inspiration and not your own idea or ego. Um, 
I don't know where I was going. There was one last thought. Um, oh, it is this idea of stopping and asking for help today, just in general. And then there's other specific things that come up and I'm trying to remember to say, oh, before I start doing my thing, let me do, please help me. And then they, and, and that slowing down and pausing goes deeper than, you know, sometimes we just, the words love and it, it just kind of is on the surface and we're not really thinking. And so this idea of really slowing down to say help and then before I leave that, I want to be deeply grateful. And I want to pause again and say, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So that's that's my two cents for it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Robin. And thanks, everybody, because all of your ideas, I'm like, oh. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Fireworks in your brain. And I love how you look in gray. It's a really nice color on you. Yeah. <laughs> That's one exception I will make is Robin can wear gray because I don't know if it is, uh, but I, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Kathy. Yeah, well, I don't really have anything much to say, but but I love what Robin just said, and, and she was talking completely about the one thing that I was going to say, which was the word fear. And um, yeah, so I, I don't want to make a big exposition about what's not true, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, it just came up to me when uh, I think the gentleman, uh, maybe his name was Mark, um, yes. you know, whatever it just came through real strongly that 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 was the stuckness that was like the ras i mean this all this external ego curing getting it done in a way that it won't get done but this what robin was saying was you know if we can remember the truth and that's where gratitude really comes from is that god is real and spirit is real and and what we have here is it. we're not depending on the world we're not depending on circumstantial things you know so anyway thanks for the show yeah thanks kathy kathleen bring us home well it's just something i noticed in paragraph yeah. paragraph five sickness can take many forms and so does unforgiveness and then down there number three so closely is one translated into the other that a careful study of the form a sickness takes will point quite clearly to the form of unforgiveness that it represents that reminds me of louise hay and um, I mean, it goes on to say that that's that alone will not affect a cure, but it's a it's a helpful step that the um, course is giving us. So we could look at our sickness and then maybe look up Louise Hayes interpretation of it and then look at, well, why would I have unforgiveness around that? Mm -hmm. It might just be a, a step to helping with um, forgiving ourselves for something and then, you know, go on to doing the forgiveness um, work with the letter, the forgiveness letter. Um, anyway, you know, we're all about taking steps. So it was interesting that Jesus gave us a little step there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, and uh, just a reminder that uh, Jennifer has a forgiveness, a free forgiveness workshop this Saturday. Um, so if you can or would like to attend uh, please register for that online. Uh, I'm not sure who's facilitating this Saturday. It's not me. I get to go and be a participant. So I always like when I get to do that. Um, and I love that almost everybody shared today. Um, even Izzy was in the picture for a mo moment and Bodhi was talking at the beginning. And <laughs> so, except for Brenda, but I see your beautiful flower, your peony there. So next week, um, we will be, there she is. <laughs> next week, we will be in section seven, still uh, chapter two, the process of psychotherapy, section seven, the ideal patient therapist relationship. That's where we will be. Brenda, would you like to say anything before I read? It's uh, 
just a pleasure to be here with all of you and a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. See, everybody had their voice heard today. I love when that happens. <laughs> okay, so I'm reading um, from Pathways of Light's uh, insights for today's lesson, which is number 297, Forgiveness is the Only Gift I Give. It's what we were just talking about. It always is. Grace is a term that has been difficult for me to understand. Perhaps that's a reflection of resistance. Today, God's grace means to me that he is true to himself. He would not change the oneness of his eternal love to meet the demand of the ego's insane wish to have more love than another. God could not divide himself and still remain himself. This is God's grace to me at this moment. Because of his grace, I can trust God. I know that he is always the same forever love. I know that he always gives me all of his love as he does to all of his creations. I know that I can count on him to never withhold his love or limit it in any way, because if he did so, he would not be true to himself. And God is always true to himself. That is his grace. Because of it, God is my rock and my strength. He is my source and my identity. He is my joy and my peace. In him is my freedom from all fear and all guilt. In him is my perfect safety. All this is mine because of the grace of God's changelessness. Thank you, God, for your grace. I accept your blessing by offering your blessing to all. I accept your peace by offering it to everyone. I accept salvation from you by offering it to the world. I do this by looking past the illusions of form and seeing the innocence you see in me. Forgiveness means allowing my perceptions to be corrected by the Holy Spirit. I am dreaming about having a separate identity that is attached to a body. This dream is not true. Forgiveness is letting go of the false ideas oh. held within the dream. So forgiveness is a constant process that happens every day of my life. It is a constant letting go process. It is letting go of what, what never was or ever could be. I understand that it is a gradual process. I understand that forgiveness is a gift to myself and a gift to the world. As I receive the gift of forgiveness from the Holy Spirit, I give this gift of healed perception to the world. I have been mistaken about what I thought I was and what I thought the world was. What I have valued in the past has been false and meant nothing. As I continue to practice opening my mind to have every thought transformed by the Holy Spirit, I free myself and the world from the chains of limitation, lack, and loss, because we are one. Each day is a continuous practice in forgiveness. Only the Holy Spirit knows how to heal the mind. Today, I would step back and not think I know anything on my own. I would practice seeing past illusions to the truth with Holy Spirit's help. I would practice looking through Christ's eyes and letting my mind be healed today. In this way, Forgiveness is the only gift I receive and the only gift I give. Amen to that. Thank you so much, everybody. It was good to see you all. Have a beautiful week. See you soon. Much love. Bye. Bye, Bye. for now. Bye, everybody.